I know you're also the thumbnail. I stand by what I said. Just hear me out. Before we get into anything, I do have a couple of disclaimers to do. First, I've never been to art school. I'm not an art student. I actually do a very boring, more analytical kind of degree. So, all of my skills and knowledge comes from what I've learnt on the internet and through practice. I'm not pretending to be the authority on anything, this is just what I found worked for me, and everyone learns things differently. I'm just here to make a resource I wish I had when I was furiously YouTubing how to find your art style in my teens. Though, if you're only interested in what I have to say about copying, this video is bookmarked into sections so you can easily skip over to that one if you want. Second of all, if you like this, or even if you don't, feel free to leave a comment down below with tips you have on creating and or improving your art style. You never know, someone might find it useful. And finally, this video is largely done in a voiceover while I paint in the background. Uh, the piece that I'm working on will become relevant later in the video. So feel free to draw along with me while we chat. You can even tag me in the art you made on Instagram. What is an art style and how do you get one? If you're here, you surely have some vague notion of what an art style is, but I always feel better when I have my core terms defined so that I can ensure that everyone is on the same page. Really, there are two different ways that you can interpret the term art style. The first is a more general use of the term that encompasses more of a genre of art, while the second is the style that is attributed to a specific artist. It's the latter which is of interest here. An art style is the way a specific artist goes about drawing their works. It encompasses the way that they use colour, their line art, the specific way they draw certain aspects of a piece like eyes or body shapes, and or the specific way that they create their pieces. Um, do they use photo manipulation as a base like Ross Draws does on YouTube? Some popular YouTube artists who have really distinctive styles include Casey Golden, Catnip, and Lavender Town. I've linked their channels below. It's that thing about an artwork that makes you go, oh, I know who drew that. Sometimes your specific art style can fall under a more general art style such as Impressionism, Cubism, or Semi-Realism, which is where a lot of my portraits tend to fall. If you're not sure what your art style is, or really what you want it to be, pinpointing which general type of art you're attracted to can be a good starting point. It can give you a sense of direction regarding the things to look into when constructing your style. Um, I do intend to build more on this point in my copying section, but now that we're on the same page as to what an art style is, how do we get one? Well, the short answer is you don't get one. Really, if you've ever drawn something, you probably already have one. There's this overarching misconception that an art style is something you randomly acquire and can just have from there on, when actually it's something you build, and it shifts and changes with you as you grow as an artist, which is all fine and dandy to know, but how do we do that? Where do we start? Unfortunately, like with all things, you really need to start at the beginning. Learning the basics. Uh, this is probably, for me at least, the most boring part and I avoided doing it for ages. However, because I avoided it for so long, my art felt as if it wasn't progressing the way I wanted it to. And that was because I didn't know the first thing about anatomy or colour theory, and I couldn't construct the dynamic pieces I wanted to by just pulling things out of my brain. I just didn't think I needed to have an understanding of anatomy because in most of the art I was looking at, the artists weren't adhering to realistic proportions. In fact, most artists, especially cartoonists and character design artists, heavily stylized their works. The thing is that in order to stylize anatomy, you first need to know what it's supposed to look like. You can't break the rules if you don't know what they are. When you know what things are supposed to look like, you know how to compensate for the bits you're exaggerating, elongating, shortening, etc. to make the overall drawing still look cohesive and like it makes sense. A great example of this is the difference between anime-like facial proportions and realistic facial proportions. The general rule for realistic facial proportions is that you can fit one eye five times across the width of your face, and the size of your nose is equivalent to the size of your eye lengthwise. Obviously, this rule doesn't apply to everyone, but let's pretend it does for a moment since I do have a point with this. Anime faces have enlarged eyes, so if you look at the proportions, they're adjusted to compensate for that. The eye will now only fit about three times across the width of the face, and the size of the nose is diminished. It is no longer the width of the eyes because it would make the proportions lack cohesion. My point is that when you understand how proportions work, 
you can adjust them however you want to make your style work while still being coherent. The same idea applies to the anatomy of the body. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to have a working knowledge of every bone and muscle in the human body. I mean, if you want to, you certainly can, and I know Proko has a great series exactly for that, but I have a very hard time convincing my brain to take in information it doesn't think it needs. Instead, I think it's sufficient enough to have a basic understanding of where the big things are and what the human body looks like generally. You don't even need to know the names of everything as long as you know what it's supposed to look like. For example, knowing that the torso has all these different components and the ribcage is in one place, the abdominals normally sit in another, helps when you're trying to break down complex poses and makes them look more realistic. Especially if your reference is wearing baggy clothes and you're trying to figure out what the body underneath looks like. If you're looking for some anatomy help, there are endless artists who've uploaded YouTube videos on it and you just need to find the one that works for you and makes sense to you. I'm also hoping to have a video series out at some point reviewing the art teaching potential of Skillshare as well, um, so keep an eye out for that if you're interested. And once you have a basic understanding of anatomy, the goal is to then put it into practice with some pose studies. The biggest thing here is that when you're looking at poses for anatomy study, and practice, make sure you're looking at photos of real people, not post sheets that other artists have put out. Those are useful later, but not at this point in learning. Why? Because once again, those post sheets tend to be stylized. And if you're still learning anatomy, you might pick up habits that you think are correct form, but are actually stylistic choices that different artists make. The key point here is to practice consistently and to get a feel for the human form and how it's built and how it moves. I'm also aware that my points here are focused on anatomy, but the same idea applies to color theory and values and all that stuff. If it's your coloring that you need to work on, you should have at least a basic understanding of the theory before you get stylistic about it. It's like I noted in my portrait tutorial um, regarding skin tones. Once you understand how it's supposed to work, you can mess with it all you want. This is where we get to the second and slightly more contentious step. Learning from others. About a month or so ago, I can't really pinpoint exactly when because time isn't real anymore, there was some controversy on TikTok over an artist making an exact replica of the Mona Lisa, except on a bigger canvas and using acrylic paint. Which, as an aside, is incredible technique-wise because acrylics and oils are widely different in use and composition. I'm actually going to insert a little extract from the video because it is really great work. However, some of the comments on it are interesting. It's not even that a lot of them are hate comments, they just seem to not understand what a master copy is and why there isn't anything wrong with them. A lot of them seem to focus on the legality of it and I'm assuming they mean from a copyright standpoint. Uh, the only thing I can say about that is that copyright on the Mona Lisa would have run out ages ago, though even if it was still under copyright, I don't think there would be anything wrong with what he was doing. Just let me explain why. First of all, I'm going to give you a rundown on what a master copy is, since it will help with understanding what I'm going to say about copying and tracing in art. A master copy is when an artist creates, to the best of their ability, an exact copy of the work of another artist that is seen as a master in their field. Typically, these are done after the original artist has passed away, like the TikTok artist, but sometimes they're done while the original artist is still alive. The goal of these can be to figure out how another artist does specific lighting effects, or how they place their colours, etc. Any prominent aspect of the piece can be studied through a master copy, because a lot of us learn by doing. And people will use some of the techniques they've learnt from a master copy in their subsequent works. There is nothing wrong with that. And you can do the same thing with art and artists you admire now. If you see an artist and like the way they use colour or their line art style, whatever, I don't see an issue with doing master copies to learn how they do those kinds of things. Nothing is stopping you from copying your favourite artist's drawings as long as it's purely for educational use. Every artist's style is just a jumble of a bunch of other art styles that they like mixed together, whether they'll admit it or not. As long as you're not 100% duplicating every aspect of another artist's work and then publishing it as your own, you're not doing anything wrong. The entire concept is what the Picasso quote, good artist copy, great artist steal, is in reference to. 
For example, when I'm not doing semi-realistic portraits and I work on character art, you'll see that most of my drawings have characters with a solid black upper lip and just a bare indication of a bottom lip. That's because I grew up watching Kim Possible and I loved how it looked on some of the characters, especially Shigo. And I ended up doing that in my own works. Same thing goes for tracing your references. You can use tracing to break down complex poses or designs. This is especially easy with digital art where we can make the pose reference as one layer and then add a layer to trace and break down the basic shapes of how the reference works over the top. The understanding gained from the breakdown of the references can then be used when you draw the poses on your own. This exact technique is shown by Ethan Becker in his video Stop Tracing, Do This, which I've linked down below. You will notice that he doesn't call this method tracing because you're not actually copying it detail for detail, which is right, but I'm including it as tracing because you are drawing over something and using it as a base. Either way, if you want to learn more about this technique, just go watch his video. <laughs> it's really good and I have nothing to add to it. Once again, as long as you're not using 100% traced and copied things in your own work and you're just using them to learn, it's okay. Tracing and copying tend to be such taboo topics in the art community. And with good reason, given how often artworks are plagiarized or shared without credit, that we don't really talk about how useful these things can be. You're allowed to trace and copy other artworks as long as you're only doing it to learn new techniques. You're not doing anything wrong and it's not illegal. Okay, so now that we've learned the basics of drawing and we've pieced together the different techniques and features we want to put into our art styles, how can we practice and grow our own art style? This is where we get to talk about some of my favorite things, fan art and challenges. A really great way to practice your art style is to draw fan art in your style. I find that this really helps me because it gives me something to work with and transform. I don't need to come up with a character on my own that can bog down the process a little bit and sometimes I get too invested in trying to make a good character and if it doesn't work out I get sad and I give up. Instead I can take this piece of media that I already like the characters of and draw it in my own art style with the added bonus of seeing the characters do things they might not normally do in the show. For example, here is some Barker Squad fan art I did of the gang all hanging out and playing video games because I thought it would be wholesome and fun and I wanted to see it. Even just doing screenshot redraws of different cartoons, animes in your art style can be a fun way to continue to build it. I'm sure anyone who follows artists on Instagram remembers the time where everyone and their mother was doing redraws of that one Sailor Moon screen cap. You can do that with any form of media that you like. Another way to work on your style is to participate in those draw this in your style drawing challenges that are really popular on Instagram. Artists will typically run these kinds of challenges when they hit different follower milestones like 1k, 10k, 100k, etc, etc. Um, for example, while we've been talking, I've been very covertly <laughs> working on one in the background. This is my version of Instagram and YouTube artist I'm a Wonders 100k follower draw this in your style challenge. Um, she actually ran this like six months ago, but I um, am a uni student, so I hadn't had time to do it until now that uh, Sydney is in lockdown. But as you can see, I've taken all the same characters and elements and just translated them into my own kind of style. So you can tell that it's the same drawing, it's just by a different person. So this way I get to practice my own style on new characters and designs that I might not have thought to draw before. I also got to practice some gouache painting techniques um, on top of that, so that was just a very cool and fun way to improve because I don't normally draw backgrounds and so trying to figure out how to make this all work uh, was difficult but really fun. So. The summary version of what we've talked about today is learn your basics so you can tastefully ignore them later, copying and tracing is okay for learning purposes, and drawing fan art is good and can make you a better artist. More or less, that's basically what I said. On a more serious note, I do hope that this helps some of you. Art styles are such a weird and complex thing and we tend to put a lot of importance on finding one for some reason. If this did help, feel free to comment, like, subscribe, all the fun YouTube things. Um, if it didn't, feel free to do those things anyway, or just comment how <laughs> it could have helped. I don't, I don't mind. I just, I enjoy engagement. Um, please talk to me. <laughs>
either way, that is all I have for today. So I hope you guys stay safe and treat yourselves kindly. Bye team.